This is a quick briefing note to everyone who is doing the practical paper. Uh, this is your generic feedback. This is the collected uh, experience, so to speak. Based on the 30 papers that I marked, the timelines and the uh, overall plans, there are a few things that came to my attention. First, I'd say probably the area most people ran into problems with in terms of not scoring points. So if you think of it as a neutral, it didn't cost you points, but you didn't gain points, was around the assignment requirements. It was still an assignment. There was still a need to use citation and referencing. There was still a set of weighting around your application of theory. The top scoring players scored well because they combined a plan. They combined a plan with theory. And what the assessment task was about was getting you to think, what have I learned about marketing? What do I know about marketing that I can acknowledge this influence as I build and create this project? So the thing to take on board from this is when you come to the second assignment, you are being judged on your marketing skills and your marketing knowledge. So if you take this as an opportunity to explain in reflection, what was the marketing you used? But also take this in a, as a really good chance over the next few weeks to try out a bunch of marketing techniques, to try out the thinking around planning and implementation, around product development. We have all these theories, we have all these frameworks, and we're a living discipline. We're a discipline you can apply. So this is your field test. And the theory was there to get you to start thinking, what do I know that I can use? So your second step now is, what can I use? And as you're doing that, go, what else can I learn? Who's been here? What's the domain I'm operating in? If I'm doing stuff on tourism, what's been written about tourism, marketing and tourism? If I'm promoting a brand, what is out there in the branding literature? If I'm going into a crowded market, what do we know about introducing a Me Too product into an existing market? So there's a lot of opportunity for you to read up, study some of the theory, then go give it a try. Go take it out for a test run. So that was the first thing. Second thing was the Ansoft matrix was an area where people either nailed it absolutely or ran into trouble. Where I saw a lot of people run into trouble was where they were looking at the market and doing the Ansoft matrix on the market rather than the Ansoft matrix on their own operation. Now, if you are introducing a new product that's new to you, new to your operation, that's the new product. So that's your question, new product or existing product. Do you already do this? Do you already make this product? So do you already offer this content? Do you already do this sort of thing? If the answer is yes, you already have a product, then the question becomes, are you selling it to people who you've sold it to before or are you selling it to a new audience? It doesn't matter when you're doing this particular thing of the audience exists. If an audience already exists, but you've never addressed them, and products that are your competitors already exist, but you haven't made this product, you're still in diversification. But the key is, what you need to be acknowledging is that you're then going into a market that has competition. You're diversifying into an area where there is already competition, products exist, and people are familiar with those products. This becomes a different approach. This becomes a quite considerably I have to position myself as one of many rather than the novel. So this was an area I don't think uh, the people who did, and several people did get to play um, quite interesting arguments where they would say, I already have a social media presence for one of my other accounts. So you know, I have a Facebook page. I want to create an Instagram page for that audience. 
Well, yep, you've got an existing audience and this is a new product, congratulations. This is how it works. Whereas other people who were going, I want to grow my audience size, that meant you want new audiences. So this is one of the keys here is if you wanted a new audience at any point, you wanted to grow the number of subscribers, you wanted to have more people follow you as an intentional central part of your platform, then you were addressing a new audience. Now, you may have an existing account, you may have an existing follower base, but if you decide that you want to recruit a new group of people, and to do that, you're gonna offer something you didn't offer before, it's still diversification as the strategy. So you gotta really think this through as, what is the account doing? Similarly, a couple of other people fell foul of, they were crossing the streams, and if Ghostbusters has taught us anything, don't cross the streams unless you absolutely have to. You basically, if you were dealing with an existing company, so you're ready, you know, you're working for a company and you talked about the company strategy. You know, oh, well, we wanna sell more stuff to people we already sell stuff to, so we're gonna set up a new Instagram account, to set up a new Twitter account. Like, hang on, this account's still starting from zero and zero, no content, no followers, it's still in diversification. That you have an audience is going to be a lot easier for you, but you're still not market penetration because you've never offered this service to that audience. So you've got to be looking for that. Uh, one other area that people did really well, and I want to draw people's attention to because the thinking around it was really nice, the smart objectives came out quite well. Uh, people also managed to produce uh, objective statements that weren't necessarily the, th the five letters out in a row, uh, but they were clear, they were actionable. But this is where something comes up in the timelines that I need people to revisit and review their timelines. And in fact, I'd like everyone just to cross check is whether your timeline, whether your milestones were waypoints on the journey to the goal. If the goal is an increased subscriber base, the milestones are the intervals you need to make to get to your target growth, but then your actions need to be tied to your milestones. And this is where a few people ran into some interesting challenges because the milestone was a thousand subscribers, for example. They had nice little intervals of 250, 500, 750, 1000. And none of their actions talked about engagements or subscriber recruiting or anything that would showcase how they were going to get those subscribers. They're a bit field of dreams. I know it's an old Kevin Costner film, but it is that metaphor of if you build it, they shall click. That's not a marketer's approach. That's a production orientation. That's a make it and hope. What you want to be thinking is, how do I address that? How do I address this audience? What do they want? The other thing that came through several people, uh, and this is an idea that I've picked up from you, so I'm grateful for this, and that's why I want to share this. Looking at some metrics and analytical responses of tracking posts that led to outcomes. So if you're looking at Twitter or Instagram, YouTube and Facebook, particularly Instagram, this is one that I saw a lot of people doing this and I think it's quite interesting. What was the take up rate after posting a particular type of content? Did the subscriber rate go up? Was one type of content more liked than another? Did one type of content trigger followers? Did one type of content trigger comments? So it was about using your own analytics, your own experience to start driving what sort of content should I repeat and invest my time in developing because, and this becomes important towards the second assignment, if you can track in your own accounts, in your own development, the sort of content that makes one of your goals attainable. So if you've got a subscriber goal 
and you're posting content that's getting a lot of comments and getting a lot of likes, but nobody new is coming on board, then you're effectively creating market penetration. You're effectively getting more use out of your existing user base, but that type of content isn't drawing in the newcomers. So that would be something you could review and go, well, from the content we made, it satisfied the people we had, but it didn't draw in new audiences. Same way, if you create a piece of content, say you put up a 15 second video, it gets you a lot of traction, it's, you get a lot of new subscribers each time you do videos. Subscribers then become, if your goal is subscribers, videos become stepping stones, actions you need to undertake to get to those waypoints of increasing your subscriber count. So look into this, use your, start observing, think about it as a market research experiment. It's an experimental design now. Make something, see how the market reacts. If they react in a way that's positive towards the goals you're trying to achieve, make something similar to what you made the first round, try again. See what you can build up in terms of your own portfolio of techniques that creates the content that'll bring the audiences. And I know I've said create all the way through there, that also includes curate. What is it that you, have shared that people are interested in. So map it, track it, start really thinking. This is your real practical experience as a marketer now. Each post is an experiment. What you're looking to do is measure, pretest, measure. What are my likes? What are my followers? Post content. What is my like count? What is my follower count? What is my like count per this type of content? Is it increasing, decreasing? Track your data, start making decisions based on your data. There's a lot of good information, and we'll go through some more of this in the classes, but this is now, when you're making it, it's now real. You make stuff, people respond. Real people are reacting to what you're doing. So, welcome to being a marketer. You're doing it for reals. And, all those skills that we've been teaching you in other subjects, so in market research, in strategy, in consumer behavior, in advertising, in intro, all these things where we talked about using different theories and frameworks, you can now get to apply, which is also why you're not on your own. If you come across that a problem in marketing you need to solve, do the research, check out Google Scholar, check Google, and if you're absolutely stumped and you come across a problem, talk to me. I'm running the lectures at the moment with a basically a roundtable workshop at the in the last hour of here's tonight's content, how does it apply to your project? So come on down, take part in the process and talk to me. I'm more than happy to share insight and information, more than happy to workshop with you and bounce ideas off you as a partner in getting this to work. So Feel free to book in some time, come see me, make some arrangements. Also, there's a world of information out there, which is why you were being pushed to do research and do theory, is so you didn't have to create this stuff from scratch and feel like you're doing it on your own. So it was a pretty good run. I'm pretty happy with the performance of the plans and the timelines. I'd like, if I did give you a call out to come see me, book a time, or have a chat over email. Quite a few people who did well were given opportunities and invitations to come and see me because you're doing interesting things with your project and I'd just like to actually sit down and have a chat about what are your options to make it really succeed. Same way, if you ran into trouble, you got a low grade and you're unhappy about it, I definitely want you to come in and see me, talk to me, let's workshop, let's make it, let's fix the problems, let's get this stuff Let's get it working for you. Because ultimately this course is not about a bunch of grades in isolation. It's about combining our expertise. You know your content area, you know your project, I know the e-marketing, we team up, we collaborate, we create something really great. And that's what I'm hoping to achieve for the course and let you achieve along the way.